Hello guys, Rod Saha here, back with another video. This time comparing ECS, EKS and Fargate. Let's start from beginning, shall we? What is Docker container? So Docker packages software into standardized units called containers that have everything your software needs to run, including libraries, code, and runtime. It lets you quickly deploy and scale applications into any environment. So you can avoid, eh, it kind of works on my machine scenarios. Once you have the Docker container, you can run it in Linux, Windows, you got the idea. So now the big question is, what is container orchestrator? Isn't orchestrator a big mouthful word? It's like, it's like framework. It's like, it's like blockchain, right? It's like, it's like one of those fancy words uh, that no one has a proper idea, but you are too afraid to ask, right? So let's jump into it and get our concepts clear. So you have created Docker images of two of your applications, application A and application B. And currently they are sitting in a place called Docker registry. So your applications are not really running. It's just an image sitting in a repository. To run your applications, you need a host. So one example of a host could be EC2. The next step would be to bring those Docker images into the CC2 and start running those Docker images as containers. So now your applications are running in containers in uh, EC2. Now EC2s are like ools. If you see one, other ones are nearby. What do I mean by that? Well, if, if it is just one EC2 running in availability zone, if it goes down, it's not really highly available, is it? So to make it uh, durable, you have to spin up another EC2 in another availability zone. Okay, so now we have two EC2s running with your applications. Now let's say the traffic increases in your application. Uh, so guess what? You have to put this EC2 in auto scaling group so that it can scale out when the traffic increases. So now we have this a pack of wolves or pack of EC2s running. Now what if application B goes down in one of the EC2s? So you have to detect which application in which EC2 went down and then bring it back up. Since there are multiple EC2s running uh, with multiple containers for your application, we need something which can route traffic appropriately. So here comes a load balancer. As you can see, there is a lot going on. So if we look at all the tasks, we have deployment of containers, redundancy and availability of containers, scaling up or down of containers, load balancing, health monitoring of containers and hosts, service discovery, and more. So if you want to write codes and processes to do all these tasks, you better be this guy, or this guy, or this guy. If you are not one of these guys, say hello to container orchestrators. You got it. So container orchestrator takes care of all the tasks associated to keep your containers up and running. So we have more than one container orchestrator available in the market. So let's take a look at some of them. Docker Swarm, Apache Mesos, Cartel Nomad Empire, AWS Elastic Container Service, and ta-da, the most popular one, Kubernetes. We have AWS EKS, which is Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes. And last but not the least, we have AWS Fargate. Uh, well, that's not the right icon. There we go, now we are all set. All right, so now we know what is container orchestrator and what are some of these. With that knowledge, let's go into battle of orchestrators. So this brings us to another concept called 
control plane. So what is control plane? It is the main entry point of orchestrator. It is the interface to launch an application, query the state, or shut down. So it's like the master of the orchestrator kind of deal. So for ECS, the control plane is fully managed, highly available, and highly scalable. So AWS abstracts it from you. You do not know how the code is written. Uh, it's all behind the scenes. And you do not pay for the control plane. For Kubernetes, however, it is fully open source. It is created by Google, and you can run on any cloud or on-prem. So what that means is you can run your own control plane on a host, such as EC2, because it is like any open source software, right? However, if you do that, you need to take care of selecting the type of EC2s, and you need to take care of the scaling of the control plane, and all the other tasks that come with managing your own host. However, AWS can manage Kubernetes control plane for you. Say hello to EKS. So pay for you need to pay for the control plane with Kubernetes. Either for the underlying EC2, if you are running the Kubernetes by yourself, or AWS managed EKS control plane. So how is Fargate different and why do we need it? So as you can see, both ECS and EKS requires managing cluster and or some infrastructure. What if you just want to run your container? You do not want to maintain any kind of infrastructure. Here comes Fargate, which is a serverless version of container. No need to create cluster or determine EC2 size. Fargate scales on demand and you pay for what you use. However, one thing to remember, like in Lambda and EC2, one size does not fit all. It can be cheaper or pricier than ECA, ECS, EKS based on usage. With that, let's take a look at a price comparison. Okay, before we jump into all these uh, money and dollar figures, just a disclaimer, this is just to give you an idea, right? So don't just take things literally. I'm just trying to show you how to calculate the cost and that one solution can vary in price from another depending on other parameters. Okay, let's jump into it. Uh, let's say for scenario one, we are just running one task and we are trying to determine the monthly cost. Uh, the task, which is equivalent to your uh, small application, takes 0.5 CPU and one gigabyte of memory. And we are assuming the EC2 worker node is of M5 large. All right, so as we discussed before, control plane, ECS, secret sauce of Amazon, you do not pay anything. EKS, you pay $144 per month, uh, and it does not change based on how many worker nodes you are using. Fargate, you do not pay anything for control plan. The EC2 worker node, which actually runs your applications, uh, we are assuming we are running one M5 large, so for that you pay $70.28, EKS, same way, and Fargate, do not pay anything. For the actual task, which is running in the EC2 for ECS and EKS, you don't pay anything because you're already paying for the underlying infrastructure. For Fargate, this is the only cost you incur. So let's take a look at this. So uh, the cost of vCPU per, per hour is 0 0.0506 and then our task is 0.5 vCPU, and then we assume it's running for 24 hours and 30 days for one month. And then uh, for memory, the cost is 0.01227 gigabyte per hour. So our task, we are assuming it takes one gigabyte of memory. So we multiply it by one, and then 24 hour for one day and 30 days, it comes down to $27.36. So as you can see for this scenario, Fargate is way more economical. Now let's take a look where we are running 24 tasks. So in this case, 
Control Plane, ECS, you pay zero dollar. EKS, as we discussed, Control Plane cost stays constant. Doesn't matter how many worker nodes are there, so you pay $144, forget zero. EC2 worker node, so we assume that we need four M5 large uh, to run these 24 tasks. So basically we need to run uh, four EC2s, so we pay $421.68 for ECS, same for EKS, zero dollar for forget. However, for the task, ECS, EKS, you pay zero, and for forget, you pay 24 times the cost for one task, which is uh, $656.64. So I understand, we are assuming the task is running all the time, and we are assuming that all these EC2s are on-demand EC2s, and you can argue, hey, this could be spot, this could be reserved, but we are not gonna go into all that, right? So the point of this slide is do your calculations. It's not given that Fargate will always be cheapest. Okay, so for ECS, this is a container orchestration created by AWS. For EKS, this is managed Kubernetes platform by AWS. And Fargate, containers on demand. ECS requires creating cluster. Same for EKS, Fargate, no cluster is required. For ECS, control plane costs zero, only pay for worker nodes. For EKS, control plane costs $144 as of December of 2018, and you pay for worker nodes. Fargate, only pay for tasks based on CPU and memory. ECS, of course, ECS has been in AWS for longer time, so it has deeper integration with other AWS services, such as IAM, application load balancer, etc. So in EKS's case, I am hesitant to put what AWS service it integrates with, because almost every week, uh, AWS is coming up with the integration announcements. So um, before November, EKS would only work with classic load balancer, but end of November, AWS announced that it can work with ALB as well in certain cases. For Fargate, currently runs on ECS. It is too early uh, to say anything about that. More to come, AWS said uh, they're working on a Fargate version on EKS. So ECS, it is good for cloud native container architectures. EKS is good for cloud native content architectures, and also it is easier to move on-prem Kubernetes to AWS EKS. So this is one of the big advantage of Kubernetes, that Kubernetes can run on your on-prem infrastructure as well. So if you decide to move from on-prem to cloud, and you're running on Kubernetes, you'd have a little bit of easier time moving to EKS uh, rather than ECS. Keep in mind though, EKS, is just managing the Kubernetes control plane. If you want, you can run Kubernetes on regular EC2s, but then you have to manage the control plane yourself. But you have the option. For Fargate, it is good for workload, which runs for a duration. Fargate, Fargate is expensive if high CPU and memory tasks runs all the time, as we saw on our previous slide. There are other differences between ECS, EKS, and Fargate, like how an IP address is managed between pods and containers, uh, but I did not put them here because it's really the inner workings of the container and it doesn't really impact the average user. That is the video, guys. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe. Alright, see you guys later.